Good morning to everybody. My name is Giampiero Manes and I am the chief of the gastrointestinal unit of the ACST Rodense in Milan, Italy. The ACST Rodense is made of four hospitals, two big hospitals, Garbagnate Milanese and Ro, with a very busy emergency unit, one uh, outpatient hospital, Bollate Hospital, and one, page, and one hospital devoted to rehabilitation. Our GI unit is a very big one unit, a tertiary high volume unit, where about 14,000 endoscopic procedures are performed every year. We perform a large number of therapeutic procedures, a large number of uh, GI bleeding uh, treatments, and uh, we have the frequent need of treating uh, surgical and endoscopical complications such as bleeding, perforation, leaks, and fistula. Uh, because of this, we have had the, the opportunity to use a different kind of clips and also the uh, padlock clips. We have been among the first in Italy using the padlock clips. And in 2017, we uh, published this paper reporting our experience with our first 14 patients treated with uh, padlock. Today, I have the opportunity to present our experience with the padlock clip and to introduce to you uh, this very nice over the scope uh, clip. Padlock clip is a uh, over the scope clip, which is designed to encircle, to lift and close tissue defect. It has a uh, linking cable, which is attached to the outside of the scope this is important because uh, the endoscopic channel uh, is free and you can use it to uh, suck the tissue or secretion and to introduce uh, other through the scope devices. It is very easy to be released. You need three finger and once it is deployed, it lay flat on the mucosal surface. It is important because uh, you can continue your endoscopic procedure without being disturbed by the presence of the clip. The clip is amagnetic, so our patient can perform without any problem magnetic resonance. <clears throat> this is the nice shape of the padlock clip. It resembles the shape of a ninja uh, stars. And this is the cable uh, which uh, is mounted outside the scope to release the, the clip. Uh, we have two uh, clip sides, a smaller one, which is for uh, endoscopic thick diameter up to 11 millimeter, and the bigger one and accordingly, the size of the chamber is different. This is the way to release the clip. Once the cap uh, is uh, on the tip of the scope, you have to push the cap on the surface, on the lesion that you would like to treat. Then you start sucking the tissue and at the same time, release the clip so that the prongs penetrate into the tissue. When the prongs are within the tissue, then the clip is released. And you can see that during the release, the prongs of the clip rotate and this movement uh, increase the lifting of the tissue. And this is the uh, appearance of the clip once it, is, it has been deployed. You can see that it is very flat on the tissue. 
In the table, I have uh, depicted the uh, different features and advantages of the uh, paddle clip. It's round symmetric shape that allow the clip to encircle the lesion with homogeneous pressure. The linking cable, which runs outside the scope so that the endoscopic channel remains free and usable for introducing other devices. Uh, the clip lift encloses the tissue at the same time when released so that the clip is likely to be more effective even if the tissue is very fibrotic so that you don't need to use adjutive forceps to pull the tissue within the chamber cap. And then once the uh, clip has been deployed, it lies very flat on the mucosa and it does not hinder continuing endoscopy. In the video, it is reported how to uh, apply the clip on the tip of the endoscope. The endoscope should lie <clears throat> on a surface and uh, uh, full retroflexion should be identified. Then the linking cable should be positioned along the retroflexion curve and the cap is mounted on the tip of the scope. Then you have used to use the O-ring to fix the cap firmly on the tip of the scope. The safety cap should be then removed and now the clip is ready to be introduced into the patients. Remember that the cable outside the scope should not have any tension when the scope is inserted into the patient. So this is the picture on the left side is the, re the uh, right position of the cable. And then this is the way to release the clip. You really need just three finger. It is very, very easy. <clears throat> uh, the indication for padlock clip are gastrointestinal bleeding in any site of the GI tract, the treatment of fistula, and the treat treatment of anastomotic clips. In these videos, you can see a very nice treatment of an a peptic, a bleeding peptic ulcer. This is a sporting bleeding for, for us 1A. This is the clip mounted on the tip of the scope. The lesion is encircled by the cap. And then you can see how easily the clip is released and the bleeding is immediately uh, stopped. This is the appearance of the treated lesion after the application of the, of the clip. This is another case of bleeding in the second duodenum, which has been treated by the application of, the, of a paddle clip. This is a De La Foy, uh, lesion. Both lesions uh, are likely to be easily treated by uh, the padlock because uh, the tissue is very uh, soft and it is very easily sucked within the uh, cap chamber. But we are able to appreciate really the features of uh, the padlock when we manage fibrotic tissue. This is a fibrotic ulcer uh, which has been easily treated by the application of a padlock clip. We, uh, we were able to suck the tissue without any problem within the cap, without using any other device to pull the tissue inside.
this is a, a case of a peg fistula that we have treated by the application of padlock. This is a patient with a neurological dysphagia that unable to eat was treated by uh, the positioning of a peg. After several months, we decided to remove the peg because the patient was able again to eat. But the fistula did not close spontaneously. Because of this, we decided to apply a padlock clip. Also in this case, the tissue appeared very fibrotic, but we were able to suck the lesion, the tissue within the chamber without any problem. We put the lesion in the middle of the cap. Then we start to suck the tissue within the cap. And then we release the clip that encircle completely the lesion and close the fistula. The clip has been released, and now you can and now you can see that the fistula is completely closed. Okay. Now, which are the role, the roles of over the scope clips and padlocks today? In the slides, it is reported some statement from the uh, guideline of the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy regarding the management of iatrogenic perforation. As you can see, in esophagus, in stomach and in colon, the SJ suggests to treat iatrogenic perforation that are smaller than one centimeter by using through the scope clips. But in case of larger perforation, larger than one centimeter, the SJ suggests using an over the scope clips. These are again the SJ guideline regarding the treatment of non variceal upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage. As you know, every guideline suggests that uh, when treating actively bleeding ulcer, we should combine uh, epinephrine injection with second hemostasis modality, which can be a thermal one or, an, or a mechanical one, clips, for example. But for patients with active bleeding, which is not, which has not been controlled by standard endoscopic hemostasis, as the suggest, they use either of topical hemostatic spray or over the scope clip as rescue 